Welcome back once again. Um, the other item on the list that we need to talk about is air suspension. So many a times uh, people do complain about air suspension and the faults that you get uh, from air suspension components. So here we have quite a number of air suspension components that are fitted on your car, uh, based on the model of your car. But ideally they are the same components or they work the same. Only different um, size, shape, make, manufacturer, and such. So, for instance, we are going to use components from a Land Rover. So, here we have a Range Rover, over there we have another Range Rover, and here we have a Land Rover Discovery uh, that use this system. This system, you also find this same setup in um, uh, a lot of these European models, and then nowadays the Japanese uh, models, um, the LC200, LC300. As well as the Land Cruiser Prado, you still have uh, this. So, what makes um, air suspension systems? So, at the core of it, we have the suspension pump. So this unit here is the main um, component for the air suspension. This is the pump. For Land Rover, you will find it in different makes. We'll have AMK, uh, which is as from late 209 onwards. You can find it um, as Hitachi, you can find it in um, Dunlop, as well as there's another one called BM. But majorly Hitachi, AMK and Dunlop is what you'll find. So this is the pump, ideally this is the compressor. So it has a motor here and a piston that goes up and down just like the um, piston in an engine uh, to create compression and then uh, air from it will come from this hole here going back into the reservoir that is now um, under the car and then from the reservoir uh, we now have things like this this is a valve block so this is what controls uh, the air in the system to go into different sides of, of, of the car so we have the main supply that comes from the pump will get in here and then we'll have the secondary supplies here going to the left shock or here going to the right shock so we have um, three of these at least for the basic system so we have three of these one at the front controlling the front wheels and then another one just uh, on the frame at the back here controlling the rear wheels and then we normally have a smaller one that is normally called um, center cross link that is just at where the pump is situated so this pump is normally right about there so just about there we have a small block that called the center uh, cross link that is now responsible for controlling air that is coming out of the pump and then going into the reservoir or going into the exhaust valve so exhaust valve for the pump is this component here so now when you raise your car up the pump comes on um, the pressure is, the system is pressurized and then the shocks will go up uh, controlled by the transmission uh, sorry by the suspension control module but then when you lower your car that air needs to go out so this is the exhaust system the air will come back it doesn't go back into the reservoir fully because at times you'll find the pump has overdone it and then the reservoir cannot hold anymore so that um, air the extra air will come back into the pump through the exhaust valve and then um, outside which is why you hear your car breathing out when you lower it so ideally those are the main components and then uh, that are situated under the car and then we have these other two ones so from the size of them you can tell um, this is a shock this is another shock so this is the front shocks so front shocks on most of these models most of these cars are a bit smaller than the back shocks so this is because uh, the front shocks are just supposed to carry the weight of the car specifically the weight of the engine and the front suspension while the back suspension is supposed to carry the weight of the car at the back as well as the load that is loaded into the car which is why you will find rear shocks rear airbags are bigger than the front ones so this is how this thing works so when uh, air gets out when they are deflated you will find your car lower sitting sort of sitting on its wheels so this is how low they go and then when you pressure it up this is how they come back up so when it is fully pressurized this whole thing is um, outside because now there is air sitting in so the air is making the spring then when air is not in you'll find your car just lying on your shock like so which is why you find some of these cars are really low they cannot so the components of these shocks we can get to that a bit later 
but this is just um, an airbag ideally which is why sometimes it's called airbags air suspension so there's an airbag this is just a housing outer housing there's an airbag in it that carries the air which is the spring and then you have this as the dust cap so in the in the shock in here we have an airbag that will come up and down um, if my cameraman can just come over and zoom in uh, if we do this so this is sort of the housing of the airbag and then this is the airbag so when air is filled in here this one now bulges out and then moves this out to make the shock um, fully uh, bumped up and then when air is let out it will shrink like so um, to just have now the lowered uh, effect and then this is the outer um, sort of dust cover or outer boot and then the rest is just the normal shock so air gets into the shock through these ducts these pipes uh, that will get in and it will get air in and then when you deflate the car uh, through the exhaust valve air will also leave the shocks using these pipes either back into the reservoir or outside using the exhaust valve and then lastly on the air suspension system we have things called um, height sensors so these are little components that work with your car just to identify how low is one side or how higher is the other side so they are fitted onto your car this way or that way but ideally they work the same so your suspension movements through this will tell your ecu or your suspension control module how high one side needs to be how low one side used to yeah, needs to be and which is why we normally have uh, right now we have cars that have uh, active suspension so once you start going over potholes once the car senses bumps rough uh, terrain it will adjust your suspension um, accordingly just to smoothen everything out so when you uh, go over a bump a bottle this little movement that are found uh, on your suspension is what is used to transmit signals to the transmission control module that uh, this wheel is high up or low so we need to raise it up or that wheel is lower than these other ones we need to raise that side up for instance for these cars if you have um, a flat tire on this side then you jack up this side as soon as you jack up this side this sensor goes up it tells the car something is happening here the car will lower the other side just to make sure that um, it makes it easier for you to jack it up and, and do the tire so this is what keeps happening uh, while you're moving around uh, this is what senses your height differences and then uh, sends back the signal to the uh, suspension control module and the um, ECU as well as the TCM just to make sure that everything is configured uh, towards your um, best driving uh, conditions and then um, most of the things that go bad in this kind of setup uh, height sensors it has been a notion that air suspension is difficult or expensive to maintain or replace so it is how you use these cars for instance these things came originally with these cars so this is something that Land Rover put on this car let's say in 2006 2007 and then 20 years later is actually these things have overworked 20 years later is when you need to replace them or when you need to service them and then the initial buying cost is what now becomes a challenge because many a times um, we buy these cars as second users third users when somebody has already used them you don't really tell how well or how bad they used it so wear and tear is majorly what kills it but mostly what kills these pumps especially is when you have leakages so this pump is designed to work pump up the system fill the reservoir and then cut out if you do not need any air any extra air anywhere this pump is always off it will not be running but now you get a situation where one of your airbag is leaking probably you hit a pothole too hard that you punctured the airbag or probably just wear and tear the thing has grown old so if you find a leak anywhere on the system and then you do not fix the leak you do not replace the airbag or the entire shop here is where you find now the system is filled up the pump knows the system is filled up but the transmission control module sorry the suspension control module keeps checking if the vehicle is level then it finds one corner is not level then it will start asking the pump to pump in more air to just make sure that it levelizes things so the pump will keep running it will keep running 
then the system is not filling up. So the pump will keep running until the motor overheats, until the pump wears out. So this is mostly what kills the pump. And then, um, just like we said on the shocks, mostly is when you hit potholes, wear and tear, just old age and things. For the sensors, um, some of them, there's uh, just the um, obsolescence. They, they, they may just die on you at some point, as well as this uh, bulk of electrical components. But then, medially, there can be simple things, just a leaking air hose that has a cut on it, has a split on it, that can be an easy fix just by splitting the hose, put a junction put a nice valve on it and then things work so air suspension is not really that difficult it's not really that uh, complex you can see these are the main components here uh, the, the shock on every corner the pump the valve block at the front valve block at the back and then um, uh, the height sensors all around and that is how you get air suspension that is how simple air suspension is yeah as usual um, like subscribe share uh, bring your cars for check diagnosis. Here is where we'll get the best deals for you.